Hi there, welcome back to SelfCAD. In part two, we explained the 3D workspace and how you position objects therein. In this video, you will learn how to operate the camera and use all of our transformation tools, move, rotate, and scale. We will start by analyzing the difference between relative and actual transformations, and then move on to the tools themselves. Relative transformations refer to changes that are done outside the object. We consider moving and rotating objects as relative transformations because the objects themselves do not change. We just change their positions relative to the 3D environment or relative to other objects within the same environment. With absolute transformations, on the other hand, we always change the objects themselves. A great example of this would be scaling. You can use it to physically make the object bigger or smaller, instead of just making it look bigger or smaller in comparison. However, in 3D software, transformations are never exclusively relative or absolute. For example, we can use move and rotate in a way that will deform 3D objects, and we can also just change the size of the object relative to the camera's point of view. To understand these concepts, let's take a closer look at how these transformations work. How physical objects move. As always, we'll be starting by examining physical objects first. In the real world, everything in our environment is always on the move. We just can't easily see it because we are moving at the exact same speed and in the same direction as everything else. What we can see, however, is the repositioning of objects relative to each other. The universe is the environment in the largest sense, but we can also specify multiple local environments. We will perceive them differently whether inside or outside those environments, and our perspective of those environments will change as we move around. For example, when we're inside a moving vehicle, we do not see objects in it move, but we can see objects outside the vehicle move as they get closer or further away from our viewing perspective. How digital objects move. We can apply the same concepts to the 3D modeling environment. You can zoom in and out to get closer or further away from objects in the scene. And you can move the entire environment with the pan camera function. You can also group objects together, for example, a table with all objects on top of it, and move them as one, or move each of them individually with the dedicated Move tool. However, it's important to remember that the pan camera function, and the camera in general, only changes your perspective in the 3D space, which does not affect the objects themselves. To change the position of the object, you have to use tools such as Move to update their XYZ coordinates in the Cartesian plane. The Move tool and Camera Projection. You can move objects by either entering exact XYZ coordinates into the text boxes or using and dragging gizmos to eyeball the location. The problem, however, is that it's difficult to position objects in 3D space by looking at them from a single point of view. In the real world, you'd naturally move around to see how it looks from each side to make sure everything is fine. In 3D modeling software, we can imitate that by rotating the camera to get a better look. But you need to remember that we're still looking at a 2D representation of a 3D object. We imitate the real world environment by using perspective, a type of projection that makes objects smaller as they move away from the camera. But it's not perfect. It's good enough to trick our eyes to see depth, but it does not allow us to see the real size of the object, which becomes problematic when you need to align objects. To solve this problem, we need to change the orthographic projection. This type of projection removes the perception of depth, which displays objects with their true size, even when they're far away from the camera. It doesn't look as good as perspective projection, but it's irreplaceable when we need to visualize relationships between objects. Adjusting the gizmo positions. In the advanced settings, in all transformation tools, you'll find the option to adjust the gizmo position to another fixed location or manually by clicking at any point in the scene. 
In the previous video, we mentioned that all 2D and 3D positions are based on a single reference point, also known as the pivot. And adjusting the gizmos allows you to set the pivot point to a different location, which can help with positioning objects relative to each other. Let's look at it in practice by aligning a nail to a slab of wood. As you can see, the gizmo, or the pivot, is in its default position here at the bottom. If we rotate the nail right now, the tip will intersect with the surface of the wood, which is not what we want. We can avoid that by changing the pivot. To do that, we need to expand the Advanced Settings and select Manual Gizmo Position and select the new pivot point at the tip of the nail. From here, we can rotate the nail into position. Adjusting the camera. We already told you how important it is to move the camera to look at the objects from different points of view. But eyeballing the position of the camera is the same as eyeballing the position of the object, which is not precise. To solve that problem, we added the option to snap the camera to specific locations. If you look at the top left side of the workspace, you'll notice a small cube with a few different labels. You can click at any point of that cube to snap the camera to the highlighted position. You can also find the option to add multiple viewports and look at your design from a few different points of view at all times. When combined with the option to snap the camera, you can observe the changes to objects at all times from different perspectives, which will not only help you with precise positioning, but also with drawing, sculpting, and more aligning objects with each other. When you need to align two or more objects, it would be tedious to position them all with the Move tool, as it would take a while to calculate all the positions relative to each other. In CellCAD, you can do it much faster with our Align tool. Not only does it allow you to position objects relative to each other, but it also has the option to add offsets to the pivot points. There are, however, still some limitations that you need to keep in mind. As both Move and Align tools operate on the global coordinate system, which makes objects that are at an angle relative to the workspace a little tricky to manage. Let's visualize it with a room with a table. As long as the table is aligned with the floor, you can measure the top of the table as an offset from the floor, and then use that distance to place objects on top of the table. However, once we rotate the table, its top will sit at an angle relative to the floor. Now, placing objects on the table becomes tricky, as each point of the tabletop sits at a different height relative to the floor. In such cases, you can look at the Rotate tool to solve this problem. How the Rotate tool can help with positioning objects. The most basic solution would be to use the same height to position all the objects, and then offset the angle by rotating the object. But again, with more objects, it becomes tedious to do it for every single one. For such problems, SelfCAD has the Magnet feature. How to use the Magnet feature in SelfCAD. You can find the Magnet in the Advanced Settings of the Move tool. Once you enable it, the center gizmo will automatically rotate the object to match the angle of the surface it intersects with and snap the object to that surface. The magnet snaps objects toward the set pivot point, which by default is at the bottom of the object. If you want to snap the object in a different direction, you can simply change the position of the pivot using the origin setting or the manual gizmo position. How to position objects with precision? The snap tool. As demonstrated in our previous examples, positioning objects using gizmos works best if you're eyeballing the location. But what if you need to position the object at a very precise location, but you don't want to spend all that time calculating the positions? Well, that's where our snap tool comes into play. It's a more advanced version of the move tool, meaning it has its own gizmo and magnet features. But instead of dragging the gizmos to position the object, you simply click at the point you want to position the object and snap it into place. You can, of course, customize the pivot, as was the case before, and change the point that will snap to the selected location. Pivot position versus direction. Moving on, let's discuss pivot settings. 
Pivot settings are a simple but essential part of the designing process, regardless of the type of coordinate system used in the project. For example, when you open the door, you're basically rotating it around the side axis. And to do it in 3D space, you need to change the pivot and place it at the hinges. However, in some cases, we might need to change the direction of the rotation, especially if an object, a window, for example, is at an angle and you need to open and close it. In such cases, you will disconnect the window from its hinges, no matter how precise you are with setting the pivot. To fix this, we need to set the direction for the rotation and align it with the angle of the pin. We can use any object as the reference point for the angle, even if it's far away from the object. The angle is the most important, as we can set its position separately. How to scale 3D objects Now that we've covered how to move and rotate objects, and how to use the camera to aid you with precise positioning, let's move on to the last of the basic transformations, scaling. The scale tool is different from the previously discussed transformations in the sense that it does not have a real-life counterpart. You can only scale digital objects. You might think that inflating a balloon, for example, would be the same as scaling, but that's not the case. When you inflate the balloon, you change its shape and thin out its walls, while scaling preserves the shape and its quality. It's possible because 3D objects are based on vectors, which allows us to stretch them without deforming them in any way. Scaling is, in fact, very similar to how the Move tool works. When you scale a 3D mesh, you are basically moving each face in opposite directions to change its size. Let's illustrate that on a basic cube. Now, we'll select just one face and move it away from the object. You can see how it stretches the object. Scaling works exactly the same, it just moves all faces on the given axis. As before, however, you will run into some issues when scaling rotated objects. You can still scale it, but selecting just one or two axes will deform the object. How to scale rotated objects? To solve this problem, we need to set the direction. We could do it manually like we just did for the rotation, but there's another option that could help. It's the Local Transformation option from the Advanced Settings, available when you select one or more faces of the object. What are normals? Local Transformation changes the position and the angle of the gizmo to match the direction of the selected region, also known as the region's normal. When you select just one face, the app will use its normal for the direction but when you select more than just one face, the app will calculate the average normal from all selected regions, which might no longer align with your desired direction for transformation. Of course, if the local transformation option doesn't work out, you can always add a custom direction for scaling. Just like we did before for rotation, you can manually set the direction in which to scale the object. How to create patterns in SelfCAD, the copy offset tool. Now that you have a good understanding of how to manually position and transform objects, let's take a look at how to automate transformations with the Copy Offset tool and how to use it to create patterns. The idea is quite simple. Just set the number of copies you want, enter as many transformations as needed, click Copy, and let the software do the rest for you. The app will calculate everything based on the provided instructions and apply the transformations to each copy. Let's look at an example. We'll place the object at position zero and then set it to move by 10 and set the number of copies to five. The first copy will be at position 10, the second one at 20 and so on. If you add more transformations, they will stack on top of each other as well, making it a powerful tool for creating patterns. Copy Offset also has a unique feature called Pivot, which automatically makes copies around the scene pivot, which is the center of the viewport, making it great for creating circular patterns as well. How to make customized patterns in SelfCAD, the Follow Path tool. Another option to create patterns is with our Follow Path tool. Its duplicate mode is great for making repetitions. It's limited to just creating the copies, 
with taper being the only possible deformation. So it has less flexibility compared to the copy offset, but it's much better at arranging copies in specific patterns. You just need to draw a profile, and the follow path will create a set number of copies alongside it. And this concludes the basic transformations, one of the most important and difficult parts of transitioning from 2D to 3D. In part four, we'll explore how to create 3D primitives and explain the basics of 3D topology structures. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one.